Welcome to the 15th season of the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Our panel includes Neil Riddell of the Altoona Mirror, Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com, KC Kantz of WTAJ Sports, and a special guest analyst each week. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Doctors Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By the bookstore in the Park Hills Plaza, featuring the area's most complete selection of books, DVDs, magazines, and collectibles. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. By Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid healthcare professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. Your rehab choice, Health South Altoona. Ask for us by name. By JMP Auto, home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By McMullen Furniture, the friendly store with quality furniture at a reasonable price. By Scotch Valley Country Club, the area's premier golf destination. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. You can also see the nitwits on altoonamirror.com. Hey, good day and welcome to another edition of the Nitwits. The panel all here, Casey Kantz, Mark Brennan, Neil Riddell, and the wonderful Fran Fisher in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Once There's again, another chair here. <laughs> Which, when Fran's here, we know we're going to laugh the entire show. Yeah, that's right. I'm funny. I'm not very knowledgeable, but I'm funny. <laughs> well, you're both. Welcome back. Nice to have you. Great to be here, Case. Thanks yeah. for the invitation, Neil. Definitely. Fran, we had Fran after the first game and the last game, and, and he's gracing us with a bow tie. I, uh, Can you believe that? Looks right. good. Hopefully it's an audition for next year. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think it's great, I Fran. I tied that sucker myself. <laughs> Can you believe it? Well, we're all in a good mood, and, and uh, rightfully so. <laughs> Penn State wraps up the year with a 24-21 overtime win over Wisconsin. We had talked a little bit last week about maybe a signature win of sorts this would be. Turns out it was, and for these seniors that now go out, um, I think we all uh, speak for everybody that this was a special, special win on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know that I've seen emotion like that unleashed uh, after a game uh, – you know, you figure that most teams don't win their last game of the year at home. They don't, you know, because they don't play their last game of the year at home generally. They're on a bowl trip or, uh, you know, you saw tremendous emotion after 94, after capping an undefeated season. You saw great emotion when Joe passed various milestones. But everything this team had been through and for the, for when the field goal went wide for Wisconsin. It was just such an incredible celebration that they're really going to be able to, to milk into the offseason. The interesting thing about this game to me was that it, had they won that game by two touchdowns, it wouldn't have been nearly as memorable. Obviously, if you're a player or a coach, you want to win as easily as possible. But the thing that I think is going to drive that home and kind of everybody's memory and make it stay there is the fact that it was so close that the fact that they did win it in overtime and there was just so many storylines in that game the numbers on the helmets the emotion of the seniors you know this guy ball going for the TD record Hodges uh, wearing coming out with a 42 it, it was just incredible Man. the amount of things that happened and when they talked about treating this like a bowl game you know what this was this team's mm -hmm. bowl game and good for them they deserved it friend you've seen a lot of great Penn State wins over your career uh, where did this one stack up for you on Saturday well it it fits in a niche all by itself because it's incomparable compared to anything else that has happened in the history of Penn State football, and it'll never be duplicated again. The phenomenal part about it would, to me was what happened between last year's last game and this year's first game, last game, excuse me, and the relative short amount of time between them and what has transpired between yes. the end of that one and the end of this one is a story that 
is going to be tough to duplicate. That's and as point. Mark said, if you're going to write a story about it, you're going to make it an overtime game. Yeah, yeah. Right. But uh, it's something uh, that I've never experienced. Uh, my first Penn State game I saw was in 1933. That's a long time ago. Waynesburg won, by the way. <laughs> but in that span, I've seen a lot of games. But I just can't fit this one into any place but a particular place. And, and that's you, where it belongs. And you make a good point because of everything that, that did go on this offseason. I mean, uh, sanctions, <laughs> transfers, new head coach. We all kind of wondered how it was going to play out. Absolutely. I mean, all our, all our preseason predictions, you know, say what you will. But eight and four with what this team had to go through, I think it's pretty remarkable. Well, and how about the heroes of this game? Yeah. I mean, Zach Zwinak, are you kidding me? This was a guy who wasn't playing at the beginning of yeah. the year. And, and give him all the credit in the world. And how about Sam Ficken? Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy was a disaster at Virginia. Ends up making 10 in a row. Yeah. Is clutch when it matters. I mean, it, you know, Fran, you're talking about writing stories. Some of this is you couldn't even, no. it couldn't have been no. scripted. People wouldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think it all starts with Bill O'Brien. Absolutely. And this hiring and the, the coaching job that he did, sticking and nurturing Sam Ficken through those times. The roster adaptability, the transformation of offense that we've seen, what he yeah. did with Matt McGloin. You know, here's Zwinnick. He was down to your, he was about your 15 running back to start the season. I mean, uh, I, I just can't say enough. They talked on ESPN radio today about, you know, a potential uh, national coach of the year candidate. He, sh he surely needed to get to eight and four to be in the discussion. He'll probably go to, to Brian Kelly, but, you know, I don't think what he do has done can be overstated. I will say this. If he's not coach of the year in the Big Ten, then yeah. it's, it's all a fraud. And, and really, I, I would say that if Matt McGloin is an in serious running for, for all Big Ten quarterback, yeah. and a lot of people will say, uh, you know, the kid from Ohio State. Well, I remember Michael Robinson in 2005. They named him Player of the Year, but he was not quarterback because he was more of an athletic-type player. Matt McGloin, the best all-around quarterback in the Big Ten this year. Give a shot to Jordan Hill as well on Saturday. Boy, he was everywhere. They were making uh, – uh, he was just making – especially in that fourth quarter, he was making stops all over the place. On a, on a bad knee. Bad uh, knee. Career high. Uh, 12 tackles, uh, you know, without Motti there, you know, without Malcolm Willis, too, who's a good guy on run support. I mean, they, uh, they just really responded. The O'Brien story is phenomenal. From the, very, from the time he appeared at the press conference and made his acceptance, if you will, and within a week, he had his constituencies in place. The alumni, the lettermen, yeah. the faculty, the staff, the players unbelievable circumstance that he was able to do that selling job and he did it because of his his sincerity yeah he's a fighter he's, yeah, oh. he's that. <laughs> well, we'll hear we'll hear from uh, coach o'brien coming up we won't we won't hear those fighter. particular words yeah, but we will not hear. gonna play that <laughs> <laughs> we will not friend i promise okay. you will not play that uh we also mentioned sam fick and we'll talk a little bit about his turnaround coming up after the break stay with us The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Drs. Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By the bookstore in the Park Hills Plaza, featuring the area's most complete selection of books, DVDs, magazines, and collectibles. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. I'm Joe Hodges from Penn State and the Lions. You're watching the Nitwits. Gerald Hodges coming out with that 42 yesterday. That surprised everybody. You know, real quick, one thing we didn't touch on is the fact that they put up on the uh, wall of honor yeah. there in the mm -hmm. 2012. I think they got to tweak the font before next season, but it was really a nice idea for what this team uh, has been through. I mean, this is a team that's had the heart of a champion. We're wrapping up a Penn State 24-21 win over Wisconsin on Saturday, wrapping up the season 8-4, and four, a record that many didn't think was even the least bit possible after the transfers and then especially that 0-2 start, if you remember. Uh, but after the way this team really responded and rebounded, it's certainly uh, a credit to them and the coaching staff. And really, guys, talk about a rebound uh, single-handedly. None bigger than Sam Fick, and I think we could agree on with that. Horrible afternoon in Virginia in week two. Uh, he's come back uh, after Saturday, hit 10 straight field goals to end the year, 15-21. Uh, 
uh, overall. Pretty remarkable ending to his season. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the real key things was that Bill O'Brien never gave up on him. Uh, and that also the coaching staff put him in positions where he could be successful. They were not trotting him out there to kick 50-yard field goals. I think they let him, you know, initially after those early struggles, they put him out there for, for a couple, you know, 20 to 30 yarders. And then as the season went along, you know, maybe stretch it out to maybe 40, 42 yards. But I think they put him in position to be successful, and he ended up being successful. And it's a it just a it's good to see because you never want to see somebody struggle the way he did. Neil, you, know, you made a good point during the break about Ficken and the positions that, that coach was kind of putting Yeah, because I thought their, their play calling was a little bit conservative in the red zone, and some of that was probably designed to avoid sacks so he wouldn't be facing 45-yard field goals, and he was able to build some confidence. You know, I would also like to say, you know, Butterworth improved as the season mm -hmm. went on, and they're kicking with the lack of scholarships that they're going to have. They weren't going to be able to go out and scholarship multiple kickers, or even maybe they could have conducted tryouts, but I think Ficken will be entrenched going into next year. Friend? To uh, follow up on Mark's point about his, Coach O'Brien, quote, not giving up on Ficken, there were a lot of people he didn't give up on. He has the ability to, to instill confidence in a guy like Zwinak mm -hmm. and a guy like McGloin. Uh, and he treats every player the same way. In other words, you, I have every confidence in you. Show me a reason why I shouldn't. That's a good point. With Zwinak's struggles, uh, at least holding on to the football, I mean, he, he had a great day on Saturday, and he's, he's really run the football well this year, but, but he has not been able to hold on to the ball all the and time. It was a real borderline call that they, yeah. they did get You're because right. it was a very close call whether he had fumbled, and, and he fumbled too much this year, but he ended up having a great year that he'll be able to, uh, you know, obviously build on going into next season. One thing Fran said yeah. real quick, and it, it, to me, O'Brien is such a relationship builder, and we've seen it not only with the players, but the community, with the media, and they said Hodges texted him right after the Indiana game because he wanted to wear Motti's number, and I, I think that that really speaks well to uh, well, how he's communicating. And Jordan Hill was the one, at least what, from what Jordan told us, who mentioned bring, putting the numbers on the, on helmets. the helmets, and I think the cool thing about that is that that's, the communication's a two-way street. And I think O'Brien realized that it, that had to be the case, especially with the senior class and everything that they've gone through, to be able to communicate back and forth with them. I know, you know, there are some people probably saying, why put the numbers on the helmet? You know, I, I think that's, I think they're missing the point. Yeah. I think this is something that the, the seniors wanted. And after everything they've gone through, give it to them. Who cares? Right. Well, geez, even when the idea came about to put the names on the back of the jerseys, a lot of people, you know, were critical of that. But, you know, O'Brien's... Uh, response to that was also great about you know wanting to know who these guys are these guys who stuck through it uh, through all the tough times well it's not the action itself of putting the names or the numbers on it's it's the reason they were put on that people should concentrate on mm -hmm. not the fact of whether you like it on yeah. there or not that's irrelevant to the situation that uh, Coach O'Brien and this team is confronted with. Well, he comes from the NFL. He's shown a lot of NFL tendencies through the years. But yeah. one thing I think he showed us this year is I think he wants to be a player's coach when possible. Seek input from the whole one team. We're going to hear from Bill O'Brien coming up actually after the break. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the job he did this year and really his staff did this year as Penn State wraps up a successful 8-4 campaign. Stay with us. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid healthcare professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South Altoona. Ask for us by name. By JMP Auto, home of the thousand dollar push, pull or tow by Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. I'm Malcolm Willis from the Penn State Nanny Lions, and you're watching the Nitwits. Well, I feel great for these kids, especially these uh, seniors. They, they put in a lot of work. You know, you go, you go all the way back to when we first came here, or personally when I first came here, which was after the Super Bowl, and started the 5.30 a.m. workouts, and and then all the things that came up during, you know, during the off season off the field, you know, and uh, you just can't say enough about these kids. You know, I, I, again, I, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's maybe a little redundant, but uh, I've been around some special teams and th this is a very special football team because of the, because of the players and, uh, and, and especially the seniors. 
boy, go back to those 5.30 a.m. workouts, and we got our first chance to see those guys bright and early. And Neil was late. He should, that's, how, that's how impressed he was by it. <laughs> I didn't know there was a 5.30 in the morning. I knew there was one a half hour after cocktail time, but I didn't know there was one in the morning. But in all seriousness, and, and, and there was still more to still come out, it seemed like, after that, and he still kept everybody together. We mentioned the 0-2 start, as tough as that was to endure, uh, as tough as the uh, transfers were to endure. Uh, we probably sound like a broken work record, but we just keep going back to the way they wrapped this season well, up. I'd like Saturday. to hit on a little bit of the staff. I mean, uh, one thing yesterday, you know, it, it had not been a strength at halftime. And uh, Ted Roof really made some adjustments after those, for, and the defensive staff made adjustments after those first couple scores of Wisconsin. At one point, forced eight straight punts. Yeah. Uh, what Charlie Fisher obviously did with the development of McGloin. I thought the offensive line played pretty well with Mac McWhorter most of the year. I mean, Zwinnick outrushed Monty Ball yesterday. So I think the whole staff really did a good job. Against a really great Wisconsin run defense, 179 well, what, yards. You know, what about the secondary, too? The lack of, of depth there. And then to lose a Willis, who was nice enough to do the intro there, and Amos wasn't on the field at the end. I mean, they basically had two former walk-ons on the field at the end of that game. And, you know, a guy like Fognano coming through with a big interception. Uh, the whole – you're right, Neil. The, the, the job he did – and I think as much as we talk – you know, I was joking with you about the 530 workouts. The fact that he was able to put together the staff that he put together, you know, starting with – to me, with Fitzgerald. I mean, as a strength coach, but then everybody else that he was able to bring in, you know what? You look back at those first two games and the fact that they lost them, maybe that's when the staff was also coming together. And maybe that's when they were kind of learning what each other, you know, does. And clearly they got better and better as the season right. went along. A lot to build on. His yeah. first time they all coached together. I was going to say, does that kind of play? I mean, unfortunately, we've heard <clears throat> the, the rumblings the past week or two of, you know, Coach O'Brien's future and whatnot. But, He's brought this whole coaching staff in. They've gotten comfortable. They had a successful season this year. He's, he's got the big recruits. I mean, does that speak a little bit more to him staying? Uh, I mean, it, I would suspect it does. He's a kind of coy about that whole thing. I don't quite understand his, uh, his inability to address that situation. But getting back to, to Roof, now he came from Auburn. Right. And there were a lot of people I understood from Auburn who was glad to see him go. But then I watched Auburn yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> they could have used them. <laughs> and I'm thinking, great I'm glad point. we have Roof and not the guy Auburn had. <laughs> That's a great point. That really is. Um, same thing, though. Do you, I mean, does that speak a little bit to, to Coach? Yeah, I changed the subject. No, I'm that's sorry. fine, friend. No, you can change all you often. want. I do that I, I mean, I think I can't imagine that for all – he said all the right things and stood for all the right yeah. things. And I, I'm kind of with Fran. I, I don't quite – uh, it's, I don't know that it's an inability, but so far it's been an unwillingness. But, you know, he clearly spoke about the future yesterday yeah. after the game. He talked about recruiting, staff getting on the road. They have a lot of recruits coming in. I guess a lot of these kids were tweeting after the game. Uh, I think the future looks bright, but it's particularly important because the players can still leave mm -hmm. be between now and August to, to create the, that stability. The whole thing is, is he's got an NFL pedigree, and everything that the agents tell you at that level is never make a firm commitment yeah. until you have to. Not and, only that, but the sure sign of a coach leaving in the modern day, <laughs> right. once he says, I'm never going to leave, I love this yeah, place, right. yes. and a week later, he takes another yeah. job. I will there's say no that, NFL jobs even open yeah, as we yeah. speak. Right. I will say this, and I think I mentioned it last week, that if it becomes the first, second, third week of December, and he still hasn't made it clear, that's when it could be an issue. But right now, there's no reason that he has to. At, at, the, at the point when players have to make decisions on whether they're staying or going, yeah. and when the rubber really hits the road with recruiting, that's when he's got to come out and say something. But for right now, I think it's much ado about nothing. It's actually made life fun on our message boards because <laughs> everybody's going back and forth on do, it. Do any of you think that he may have had a little session with his players and that he wants to keep it an inside thing? Do you think that could be kept? Well, they kept the helmet thing from everybody yes, right. somehow. So I don't, you know, they. I think he's done a pretty good job yeah. of locking down info. And, and in this day and age, let's face it, you know, the coaches aren't looking to be pressed up against by the media yeah. when they can avoid it. Uh, real quick, by the way, we're going to have a postseason wrap-up yeah, show. Yeah. So some of this, uh, this issue will we'll continue. Well, with, if you uh, get stuck, week. you can call me again. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're due for our, our final break. We'll step out and take it right now. Come back, wrap things up after this. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By McMullen Furniture, 
the friendly store with quality furniture at a reasonable price. By Scotch Valley Country Club, the area's premier golf destination. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. Welcome back to the Nitwits. Penn State 24-21 overtime winners of Wisconsin on Saturday. Wrap up the season at 8-4. If we could get our Nitwit of the year standings, things are getting pretty tight, Neil. Good pick yesterday, Casey. Got to give you credit. You nailed it. Three-point game, right? I felt good. And, I, and, and if, uh, I did say Sam Ficken would win it, I think. Yeah. Not to, I was fine until the overtime. Fine until the overtime. So we, exactly have to fit, we have to settle the tie at, the, at our end of the year the, the, we'll explain the criteria end of the year show. Why don't you, yeah, we, we will do that actually because uh, you did say early, earlier tonight that we will have an end of the year show to be coming at you next week, so we hope that you can tune in for that. Fran Fisher, thank you so much for stopping oh, by. Oh, what a pleasure. A pleasure. Flattered to be here. Pleasure to have you. Um, we'll You're see like you guys. a den father, but what the heck. <laughs> <laughs> we really do appreciate it. We'll see you guys next Thanks. week. We'll be here. And uh, we'll see you folks next week too. Thanks for watching. Nitwits have been brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Doctors Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By the bookstore in the Park Hills Plaza, featuring the area's most complete selection of books, DVDs, magazines, and collectibles. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just Ask Rental by Pacifico's Bakery. Genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid healthcare professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South Altoona. Ask for us by name. By JMP Auto. Home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By McMullen Furniture, the friendly store with quality furniture at a reasonable price. By Scotch Valley Country Club, the area's premier golf destination. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. You can also see the nitwits on AltoonaMirror.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.